everyone, this is Professor Benjamin and welcome to week three of this course. And this week we will be covering migration. Um, and so you can see right here under the migration description that we will be covering the history and distribution of migrants, the reason for migration. So we're going to talk about environmental, social, and economic, what we call push and pull factors. And then, of course, the barriers and challenges to migration. This week, you have to read Chapter 2, 2.8 in the text, 2.9 in the text. And then there's some additional readings. There's no assignment due this week. You have your initial post due by Tuesday, a response post due to your fellow classmate by Thursday, and then, of course, a quiz by Sunday, 11.59. I'm briefly going to go over the PowerPoint um, that we will be covering this week um, for migration. And then you can also see that we have um, why, a video on why people migrate. Um, so this is a fantastic video on why people migrate. Um, the first official climate change refugees in the U.S. So climate change refugees um, will be something of the future. There are um, there may be designations for individuals that are affected by climate change. You can see in the recent wildfires in California uh, with the fact that we've had the most uh, storms in the Atlantic ever in recorded history. Um, so there's a lot of um, – Colorado had its highest temperature and then the next day had one of its lowest temperatures. They had a snowstorm. So you can see that climates are changing and this term climate change refugee may become – um, why people migrate in the future. No Country for Lost Kids. Um, while this is an older article, it's definitely a hot topic on child migration from Mexico and from other places of the world. A uh, firsthand report on inhumane conditions at migrant children's detention facilities. We have to talk about that um, because it relates to migration in this class. Um, then there's really um, migration. There's We're going to cover some historical context too, which brings about a lot of race relations and what's going on today. Um, the 1965 immigration law uh, changed the face of America, understanding migrants through what they've carried. This is more of a recent article, and it's really a, a, a really heartbreaking article. So um, when they find uh, backpacks and other things from individuals that have tried to illegally cross the border um, into the United States, it's, it's a really, it was a museum piece, and it's really sad. Um, and then we're going to talk about the Great Migration, the African American Exodus North. So there's a couple. Que there's a question in the forum that I'd really love for some of you guys to answer. Um, and then the History Channel has a really great little piece on the uh, Great Migration as well. So these are really great articles um, and items for you to read. Before we kind of, you know, before you jump into the session, I just want to kind of just briefly go over migration. So migration, what is it? I'm just going to briefly show my thing. Um, Mr. Sin helps us unpack the 10 types of migration. So I really want you to look at this migration video and know what the different types of migration are. Um, there's a lot of different reasons people migrate, and this will help you with that economic, social, um, and environmental push-pull factors. So this will help you understand those concepts in terms of this class. Migration is the physical movement of people from one place to the other, and this includes both long and short journeys. So there can actually be migration within a country or even within a state. So, you know, we may actually see migration out of one county into another county, um, etc. So make sure um, you understand that this is both a global and a local scale issue. Uh, immigration is the movement into a place. So I want you to think about immigration in and then emigration out, exit. Um, and so they're the two different terms. They're very important terms. And you can kind of learn them just from the, the, just by looking at the um, prefixes of the words. Internal migration is people that travel short distance within their country. And usually this is for economic reasons. So there's interregional and intra-regional migration. Um, and these are two important terms for you to know. And may maybe a lot of you have already kind of been part of one of these migrations. I know that I have. Um, we have migrated throughout um, parts of Philadelphia and New Jersey, um, and a lot of that is just within the region. Um, and that's because, you know, job opportunities or other opportunities, and, and we've moved. So that's important for you to know. 
Then there's, of course, international migration. And this is from one country to another. There's voluntarily voluntary migration, which is, of course, based on your individual choice. I choose to go to another country. And then, of course, there's forced migration. And that is leaving against his or her will or their will. Um, we, I should probably take out the pronouns in there. Uh, migration transition, change in migration patterns within a society caused by industrialization, population growth, um, and other social and economic changes that cause demographic transitions. Mobility, the ability to move permanently or temporarily. And then there's those push-pull factors that we've cost about. We talked about. Push means you move out of an area because of economic, um, political, environmental, social issues, right? And then pull means you're pulled into an area because you are attracted to that area. And it could be freedom. It could be that it has more trees or more green space, right? So there's a lot of different reasons. It could be that you're, um, you are, uh, there's no wildfires there, right? So right now, I bet you any amount of money, we see push factors being environmental conditions in a lot of areas like the wildfires that are going on in California, meaning people just choose not to rebuild in specific areas because, because of the chances of wildfires. And then, of course, there's cultural push factors, cultural pull factors. So we talk about these, and here are some examples of those environmental um, push and pull factors. A refugee is someone who has been forced from their home and cannot return because of their religion, race, nationality, or political opinions. And this is supposed to be protected by the 1951 Refugee Convention. And it's an act. And it, But the problem is, is that when individuals come to a country, um, for example, they come to the United States, they have to claim refugee status. And you have to prove that there was some form of religious, race, nationality, or political issues in your country that caused you to leave. Now, under previous administrations, and I'm not saying it was always perfect under previous administrations, um, it was a little bit easier to claim refugee status. Not all the time, but it was. Um, under Trump's administration, it is very hard to claim refugee status. Um, and so what we have is a lot of individuals waiting a really long time to hear whether their status has been approved or not. Um, and that is something really important for us to think about, um, especially in today's day and age, um, you know, just with social responsibility. Internal displaced persons are people displaced within their country. Environmentally displaced people, a uh, person is a, a people who have been pushed for environmental reasons, and there's that climate change refugees, or those not protected under the 1951 uh, Refugee Convention. So I want to also, I, I try not to give you tons of slides because I know it's just a lot of information today. There's so much going on that sometimes if we were given too much information, we shut down. I know I do. Um, but at the, at the end, this when you click on this link here on the PowerPoint, it'll bring you to this slide, which is a really cool slide. And this, um, it explores new estimates of migration flows between and within regions for five-year periods from 1990 to 2010. And you can click on the area, right? And it'll help you understand where these individuals have, you know, people have migrated from the United States to Canada, right? Or from the United States to Latin America. It gives you this really cool idea, right? Um, I, I love this little chart. It's really amazing to me. Um, and then, like, look, in Africa, you can find out where people m left and then kind of where they're headed, etc. cetera. Um, and you can kind of see the thicker, um, the band means the more individuals. So here, look at this. Here in, in the 1990s and 1995, Africa saw a large amount of migration. And if you know anything about um, genocide and wars that happened in Africa, there were a large amount in the 90s. Um, and so you can see there was a large amount of individuals who fled countries in the 90s from Africa. You can also see here in the 90s, there was a large migration pattern from Latin America to the United States. You can also see there was a large migration pattern from the United States to Europe in the 1990s. And a lot of this is tied to specific regions, right, or reasons why. And that is really what the whole idea of this course is. 
I want you to unpack the reasons for why things are happening, right? People don't just migrate for no reason, right? People migrate for reasons. There's reasons behind this movement. And we, our job here in this class is to unpack those reasons why. Giving me just the basics like, oh, people migrate is one thing, but we really need to dig down as to why this is happening. Policies, um, environmental reasons, what was going on in the economy at the time, what was going on in terms of civil war, genocides, right? Lots of different reasons why people migrate. And our whole idea is to become just a little bit more acquainted with what's going on in the world and asking those reasons, well, why? You know, I, I'm in a lot of political debates with individuals lately, and I want to know why. Well, why? Tell, tell me more. You know, it's one thing to make a statement. Um, you know, well, this, this is the way it should be, right? Um, but I want to know why. I want people to unpack that more and explain to me further what the reason why. Okay? And I hope that this class will force you to do that. Um, and with migration, it's a, it's a wonderful way to ask why. Why? Why? So from, to, to, uh, from 2005 to 2010, why? Why is there this large migration um, from the United States to Europe? There were a million people. Why was there this large migration from Latin America to the United States? Three million people. Why? Why? Um, here's another one from the United States, from South Asia to the United States, 1.1 million people. So why? These are really good questions. And I know I keep saying, well, why, why? Um, but I think it's important for you to understand and ask why. All right. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, remember, you're going to be having um, more assignments coming up in the semester. Um, and I hope that you find some of this material interesting and it helps you um, be able to answer some of those questions within the assignments with more ease and with more detail. Have a fantastic week.